What's up all you seekers of Wu Day? It's the cause, it's Midnight Lights, and it's the ultimate how to be in spare Jin Fang guide. This is everything you need to know to beat Jin Fang, and to do it with good strategy, approach, and skills, not cheesing or cheating the game in any kind of way or running around where it takes you 30 minutes. No, it's about scouting out her moves, figuring out the best approach, countering and using your good defensive skills to beat Jin Feng. So let's get into it. And to with all the amazingness packed into this video, we're going to start with basic approach and tips. Then we're going to scout all of Jin Feng's phase one and phase two moves. Then I'm going to talk to you about how to maximize your damage and damaging her structure with the best combos and strategies for the offensive stuff. I'm going to go over where to get weapons and how they help against Jin Feng talk about the best shrine and skill upgrades and then there's a video and extra guidance on how specifically to spare and not knock out Jin Feng and then there's a full no death video we're gonna watch so let's get going with approach and tips just some general tips before we scout all of our moves and talk about how to do the most damage so the first general tip around approach is don't be the aggressor for every boss in Sifu, it's better to pick up on what move, it's better to study their patterns, pick up on what move they're using, and then use your defensive strategies like avoid, parry, deflect, etc. to be able to then open up vulnerability windows that then you can do damage. Because if you're the aggressor, they're going to counter and, and they're going to do a ton of damage to you and it's not going to go well for you. So that's why it's so important to scout and get their timing. That's why I say, you know, the first two or three times you go up against a boss, you're probably going to die a lot because you're just getting their timing down. You're scouting all of their moves so that when you're like, okay, I'm ready to really try and beat this boss without dying a lot, you're already going to have practiced their timing so that you've got the, the best timing for avoiding, parrying, and deflecting. So be okay dying the first few times as you scout their moves and get their timing so that when you're really ready um, to beat them, you're probably actually not going to die that much. Uh, gathering information and timing is huge to beating bosses in Sifu. You know this already, but in order to open up what I call vulnerability windows, which are these very brief periods of times where you know bosses and other enemies in Sifu are basically vulnerable to you doing damage one of the best ways to do that is to avoid the final move in any of their combos so Jin Fang like so many others have three part combos and if you avoid the third move in the combo then you'll open up a vulnerability window and the better you get at um, anticipating and reading Jin Fang and any boss's combos and opening up and capitalizing on those vulnerability windows, the better rhythm you're gonna get in. You're gonna find that you're just able to do more damage and take less damage because you're like, okay, here's this move, I know what to do, I'm gonna do some damage, then I'm gonna back away. I know this move, I know when to avoid at the right time and open up a vulnerability window and then do some damage and get away. Now, another tip that's important, especially for Jin Feng, is to recover. If she breaks your structure and knocks you down, she does this sort of hammer stomp with her bell thing that will do a ton of damage. So you'll see here, she's gonna break my structure and sweep me, and then you see that um, bell hammer kind of drop down. You need to press R2 and roll away. Just get out of the way as soon as you fall down, or else that little bell drop she does right there is gonna do a lot of damage. An important way to establish a rhythm and to really um, prevent a lot of damage from being done when after she's maybe landed a couple moves in a combo is to use focus early and often. As soon as that bar fills up, I recommend you using it because you'll get some good damage in and follow up with a combo. And don't forget that using avoid and doing it skillfully and quite often will help build focus and build focus fast, which will help you um, get in bigger, longer combos by using that focus bar. So next. It's important as you're scouting and as you get better at sort of timing out and recognizing Jin Feng's combos to block or parry the first ones. Remember, blocking is just holding L1 and parrying is pressing L1 as soon as the um, phase of the combo lands. So doing that for the first couple phases of a combo is really good because it gives you time to recognize like, okay, which of these combos is this? And once you recognize it, then you can start kind of working towards avoiding the last move in the combo, which will open up a vulnerability window. 
so you can see here I'm sort of like okay I'm avoiding that I'm parrying that and avoiding that and all of that while I'm like okay which combo is this getting ready to avoid the last move in the combo and then counter and do damage beating Jin Fang and even sparing her is is very much a structure game so I found that it was hard to do a ton of damage to Jin Fang because her vulnerability windows are very very brief so that's why it's so important to parry. Anytime one of her swings of those bells is about to land, if you press L1, it will do a little structure damage to her. So a lot of beating Jin Feng is really relying on um, max uh, breaking her structure even more so than um, knocking her out. And remember that when you break her structure the first time, that gets you through phase one, and then you just have to break her structure twice in the second phase without knocking her out to spare her so a couple more quick things about that are unique to Jin Feng is sort of distance and timing so uh, it's important to keep your distance with Jin Feng because the closer you are the faster her combo moves will come at you so if you keep a little bit of distance you'll have just those extra little milliseconds to see what combo she has and um, then you'll be able to anticipate okay I know what the next move is I need to avoid and then I can counter um, and also her three phase combos, which we're going to talk about in the next section of this video, they're not sequenced perfectly. They're not like one, two, three. They're like one, two, three. So just important, you're really going to have to study her timing um, and get used to pairing at just the right time, which is pressing L1 as soon as it lands. But you can see when it, when you're really close to her, it's really going to be a detriment to you because those combos are going to come so fast. Right, now we're going to move into all of Jin Feng's moves in Phase 1, where we're going to scout them out, get the timing, um, and I'll kind of tell you the best strategy for defending and then countering for each and every move. So the first move, and the first two here are the ones we're going to focus on because they're the easiest and best to counter. So this is a two-punch sweep, so watch it here. Punch 1, punch 2, sweep low, 3. So it's a three-phase combo, two straightforward punches and then a, a low sweep with or a kind of swipe with her uh, bell there so um here's some things you can do with this combo to help do damage and open up vulnerability windows so one you can just avoid all three so i'll show that in slow mode here so remember it's two punches so you can avoid in any direction except up so i just avoid those two and then you press l1 and up or avoid up for the sweep that's the only way to avoid the sweep and when you avoid that sweep it's going to open up a very brief vulnerability window where you can run at her and try and get a couple, um, a little combo in. The best thing to do, I think, is a combination of parries and avoids. So parries are when you press L1 as soon as it lands, and you'll see in this slow-mo when I do that, her structure gets damaged. So that bar at the very top, if I press L1 every time her bells land, is going to do damage to her structure. So that's the best thing to do. Because um, uh, she keeps this distance for so much of it, it's good to do. The other thing that you can do is just run in a circle, and she won't get you with those two punches, and then you just avoid the sweep. All right, the next move is a high swipe of straightforward punch and then a sweep. Let's watch it in slow-mo. High swipe, you can avoid any direction but up. Same with that punch, and then avoid up for that sweep. Um, so the best thing, to, or one of the things you can do this is just avoid all three, where again, the first two you can avoid in any direction except up. And then on the third one, you do want to avoid up. That's L1 and up on the joystick, the left joystick. You can see it here in real time, just avoiding all three. And avoiding that third one opens up a vulnerability window and you can do some damage. Again, the best thing to do here, once you recognize it, is try to um, parry these moves, which will do damage to her structure. So each time those moves land, you press L1 and it'll do damage to her structure, which is my preferred method because it'll just help this level, uh, help this boss go down much quicker. Now, if she breaks your structure and knocks you down with one of those sweeps, she will follow it up with this like very devastating stomp. So you want to make sure if you ever get knocked down, you press R2 and roll out of there as fast as you can. Also, if you get a little greedy with your counter combo where you open up that vulnerability and then go after her and your combo's too long, she, like every boss in Sifu, will punish you with like a very quick counter move that does a lot of damage. So you can see me getting kind of greedy with those, and then she counters and does some damage. All right, on to all of her Phase 2 moves. So we're going to scout all of Jin Fang's Phase 2 moves, and they're pretty similar to Phase 1. 
So her first move, which is the most common one she uses, and is very similar to the, the first move I went over in phase one, is this high swipe, straightforward punch, and then sweep. Now, she this time, it's a little different because if she gets you with the high swipe, she'll drag you in and punch and kick you, basically. So you can watch it here in slow-mo. She gets me with that high swipe. I don't avoid it. You have to avoid it. And then she follows up with those two moves. So just be aware of that. You want to avoid it. And the, uh, one of the things you can do with this, just like in the first one, is avoid all three. So avoid in any direction for the first two. And then avoid up for the last one. And that'll open that vulnerability window. The best thing to do, though, is avoid that first high swipe because she'll get you if you're blocking. And then um, parry the other one. So when they land, press L1 and it'll do damage to her structure. Now, her two punch and sweep um, is faster in this one. So you'll see it's the same combo as the first phase. It's just faster. It comes quite a bit more quickly at you. So just be aware of that and get her timing down. Same deal, you can avoid all three, which I, I is one really good way to do it, but the best thing to do is to try and parry as many of those attacks as you can. These two combos are what she does like 85% of the time. They're the easiest to deal with. You just have to scout her timing and get it down. And remember with this, the other option you have, other than avoiding all three and avoiding and pairing, is to run around for the first two and just avoid the last one. Again, if you get greedy with your um, counter move, she will, or with your combo, she will do some counters to you that you want to be very weary of. Um, I avoided there, but the best thing to do is to strike and then move out of the way. So you'll see here, she breaks my structure again with one of these sweeps and, and drops that hard like bell stomp. Um, and that does a lot of damage too. So again, you want to press R2 and roll away. Moving now to the best ways and counters and combos to maximize damage against Jin Fang, which is going to focus a lot on her structure um, because it's actually hard to do a lot of damage against Jin Fang uh, because you have to keep a distance for most of this fight because those bells are so long and it's really helpful to be able to keep a distance or else her combos will come at you so fast and furious. So that means we've got a breaker structure from afar and that's why I want to talk about the magic of parrying. So remember, parrying is pressing L1 every time one of her blows lands or when one of her combos land. And you can see here that every time you do that, it does a little damage to your structure, but also to hers. So that's why with Jin Fang and having to keep a distance, a big part of this is damaging her structure. But when you do avoid on the last move of a combo and open up a vulnerability window, I really recommend doing light attacks because they're quicker. Her vulnerability windows are very short. Sometimes I honestly feel like they're pretty much non-existent. So it's really important when you do have an opportunity that you go in pressing the light attack button. And even if she's blocking a little, that's okay because it will still damage her structure. And remember, with Jin Feng, it's the structure game that you're going for. Better to break her structure, easier to break her structure than uh, deplete all of her life, which is different than Fajar and uh, Sean. So just keep on her structure. Um, you may find that you want to take a break to rebuild your structure, and that's okay, but you don't want to make too much time where you're not doing some damage or parrying. Um, remember, too, you can extend your combos with a focus, so you can get one a phase, like a three-phase combo in, a focus move, and then another three-phase combo. The real key to beating Jin Fang is really all about a healthy dose of damage by avoiding on the last phase of a combo and also parrying her combo. So you can see there, I avoid it on the last move. I come and do a little damage where I can, but then when she comes at me with her combos, I'm gonna try and press L1 at just when they land to do some damage to her structure. And that's how you're gonna beat and spare Jin Fang. Next, we're gonna talk about weapon locations and tips. It is very nice to have a staff against Jin Fang for a couple reasons, but first let's talk about where you get the staff. You'll go up against this person right before you get to Jin Feng, and there's like 25 staffs in here. So it's very easy to get a staff and bring it into um, fighting the boss Jin Feng. And it's really helpful because when you do run at her, you can do kind of a, a pointed attack from a little bit of a distance, and that's helpful. The light attacks are really good because they move quite quickly with the staff, which is important because their vulnerability windows are so short. Also, I find that it helps with parry. I can't say this for a hundred percent sure but i think if you have a weapon and you're parrying it does less damage to your structure hit me up in the comments if you think that's right or wrong
All right, y'all, we're crushing it right now. Let's move into my recommended shrine upgrades and skill unlocks to beat Jin Fang. So remember, with Jin Fang, it's kind of about um, doing a lot of parrying. And remember when you parry that that does damage to your structure. And it's also about a couple other things I'm going to go over. Just note that as I go through these, if the skill or shrine upgrade I talk about has one, two, or three asterisks, one is like pretty good, two very good, three like critical. So structure regain is really important because you're going to be doing a lot of pairing and avoiding, which will help rebuild your structure and prevent her from breaking your structure. Also, focus regain, like I said, focus, using your focus early and often is really big for doing damage and getting some extra combos in. Lastly, I'll say, and it's not the most important, the other two have two stars. This one has one, is weapon durability. As you are likely to come in with a staff, it's just nice if that staff can last a while longer to help you with the parrying and doing damage from afar. I'll go to a little bit coming up with the best skills because honestly you don't need a ton of different skills to beat Jin Fang. But one is the chasing trip kick and I'll tell you why. It's because typically when I use a focus move I follow it up with this because it just does damage quickly. Puts her on the ground and then you can do a ground and pound by holding circle. And that's really important because again her vulnerability windows are so short. Now remember too that a lot of what you're going to do from Jin Fang is from a distance and then you have to close that distance quickly during a vulnerability window. So that's why slide kick is also kind of good because um, when you do close down that distance you're able to close it down just a little bit more quickly and get a slide kick in which is just running and then pressing triangle. And what you'll see in this video is it's actually kind of cool because sometimes when you slide kick during a vulnerability window it will break up her next combo coming at you. So you'll see, I open up the vulnerability by avoiding that sweep. She's starting another combo going. I slide kick to break it up. We have arrived at my full How to Spare Jin Fang video. This is everything you need to know to be able to easily spare Jin Fang, but to do it by using skills and strategies that are most effective with Jin Fang. Let's cover first though, just generally how to spare a boss. And remember that sparing every boss is how you get the true or best ending of the game. So the way that you spare a boss in Sifu is that you break their structure twice without draining their entire life meter and you do all this in phase two. So breaking their structure means filling up that bar at the top before the bar at the bottom is empty. So that structure bar on top, life bar at the bottom. When you break their structure for the first time, it'll ask you to press triangle circle. You don't want to do that. When you break it the second time, it'll give you the opportunity to press left on the D-pad for PS5, and that's how you spare them. Okay, this next part's important, but it's a little hard to describe. So there are some things that permanently save in Sifu, which you probably know. One of the things that permanently saves is the youngest age at which you beat a hideout. So if you beat a hideout at age 23, you'll always be able to enter the next hideout at age 23, no matter what. So that's one thing that permanently saves that's relevant for us here and now. The second thing that permanently saves is the record that you spared a boss. So what does this mean for you? You can beat a boss without sparing them the first time, and then you can go back and try and beat them again and beat them by sparing them and you can beat them at age 75 or spare them rather at age 75 but no matter what the youngest age in which you've beaten a boss by sparing them or knocking them out that will save for the next hideout so it's okay if you die a lot you only have to spare them once to get the true ending all right, let's move on to talking now about what actually breaks their structure. What's going to do damage to that structure meter? And it's as you probably know or can anticipate, it's doing damage, hitting them even when they're blocking, parrying their moves, which is hitting L1 as soon as one of their moves lands, and deflecting, which is hitting it perfectly, hitting L1 perfectly on some moves um, that then sort of send them into a brief stun. Um, which I, I didn't find any ways or places to do that with Jin Fang that were very easy. So that's why parrying with Jin Fang is the number one and best way to damage her structure, break her structure, and spare her. So parrying, like you can see here, and I'll slow it down for you, is just pressing L1 every time a move lands. 
and you can see it's doing damage to her structure. It does a little damage to your structure, but does quite a bit of good damage to her structure, which again, when that structure bar fills up, you'll be given the opportunity to spare her. Let's wrap up by saying that the best way to spare and beat Jin Fang is to keep your distance so those combos don't come at you too quickly and you can anticipate a void and parry them. And to parry, pressing L1 every time one of her moves lands. That's the best way to do it because you're going to do damage to her structure while still being able to see and avoid her combos. And I hope that works for you. So now I'm going to give some commentary on a full uncut video of me beating and sparing Jin Fang and applying some of the stuff that we've gone over so far. So you can see I'm already starting from a distance trying to identify those two combos that she uses the most. I forgot my staff there, so I went and got that. And with the two punch combo, you can run to avoid the first two before the high swipe. Just don't run into a wall because she'll get you. And then you can see me using focus there to extend my combo, do a lot of damage. You can see I probably do a quarter damage, maybe a little less than that just in um, by using a combo a focus in a second combo all right so again i'm keeping my distance trying to get in a rhythm that's the two punch sweep which i saw and i ran to avoid the two punches and then avoided um, with up on the left joystick for the sweep i'm mostly focusing on using square in my combos against her and keeping them going even when she's blocking a little bit because i know i'm probably going to defeat her by breaking her structure more so than um, doing damage because again I'm just keeping so much distance so all of those I tried to parry by pressing L1 when those blows land I did that there too you can see her structure bar go up every time that happens anticipating those two main combos and there you go phase one done that looks painful got to avoid that stomp that bell stomp thing so in phase two, remember it's some of the same combos, but that high swipe that she does, if it gets you, she'll draw you in. So you want to always avoid that high swipe. And remember it goes high, punch, low on that particular combo. So you anticipate the low swipe and press hold L1 and then up on the left joystick. So there it is. I think I tried to parry that last move and do some structure damage. Again, that's all pressing square to get in quick moves, even when she's blocking, to do damage to her structure. So that's her counters, which are, you just want to hold L1. If you get too close and she counters, those moves are harder to anticipate, so I typically just hold L1. So I avoid on those sweeps. It opens up the vulnerability. I just run at her and try and get a few sticks in. And you can see it's done so much damage to her structure, but she has a ton of life which is right where we want to be. That's the two punch sweep that happens in phase two that goes pretty quick. So again, you can block or try and parry the first one, but just make sure to avoid that sweep, which will open up the vulnerability window. Ooh, that was very risky to run at her, sort of right as I see her doing a combo. So that broker structure, it's gonna ask me to press triangle circle, but I'm not gonna do it because we have to break her structure twice in phase two, and the second time it'll ask if we want to spare her by pressing left on the D-pad of PS5. So I'm avoiding and parrying these very predictable, most often used combos from Jin Fang. That's a sort of counter move again. I'm just pressing L1 that whole time, creating some distance, getting my structure back. That's the high swipe, punch, low sweep. Avoid that low sweep, open a vulnerability window up, do a little damage with your light combos. She did a counter move where I just kind of got out of the way. That's the two punch sweep. Remember her most common used combos both end with a sweep. So just anticipate, even if you hold L1 for the first two phases of any of her combos, um, and then anticipate the sweep, that'll be good. But of course in phase two, if you're holding L1 on the high swipe, um, it'll grab and pull you towards her. So it's good to get good at avoiding um, as well as parrying. Anticipating that last sweep, avoiding high, opening up a vulnerability window. We're so close. You can see she almost has half her life, at least a quarter of it. Oh man, she almost killed. Oh goodness, I'm about to die. I promise this is a no death video. Boom, so that focus did it. You saw the left D-pad show up. 
uh, asking if I want to spare her. You press left on the D-pad, and that does it. That's how to beat and spare Jin Fang. Everything you need to know with no cheese, no death, no sweat. I hope it helped you. I love making these videos for y'all. Please leave comments and suggestions about how I can make these videos better for you. That's the ultimate how to be in Spare Jin Fang Guide. And remember too, that you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Midnight Lights with Midnight spelled a little bit differently. And also that I'm still in the process of working towards a thousand subscribers on YouTube so I can monetize these videos. Now, when I monetize these videos, 50% of any penny I make will go to a charity that me and my subscribers choose. So thanks for watching.